All right, so this is what's happening. I'm getting ready to get together some new training teaching you how to make online money. Now, to schedule a call for the mentorship, go to the first comment, and it's a short question there. Take you a few, less than a minute to fill out, then book your call where we can talk to you about entering into the mentorship program. If that's not what you want, below that is a link for consulting calls if you want to set up a consulting call about how to start a business, how to set up LLC, anything you want to, that link's also below. All right, so let's get into today's video. I was thinking back to the pandemic, and that was scary times, uncertain times. We had football games with no people in the stands. We had because of that television contract. Um, we, we had a lot of bad stuff. And unfortunately, we did have a lot of people pass away, got sick, passed away. And that has left a lasting legacy and impact for many, many people. So we, we had that. That was the forefront. We had massive unemployment or massive layoffs because people were told to stay at home. The economy changed. Uh, certain businesses boomed. Uh, Lyft and door drive drivers stopped doing it. So the ones who were on the road made a lot of money. And the, the pandemic set the frame for what's happening right now with this government stimulus. And that's what I'm gonna talk about. Uh, I was watching a video by Jeremiah Babe and he and a, a, a friend were walking through Walmart. Three days ago, Walmart. The store was practically empty. There were people in there, a few people shopping, but not what you would expect to see this time of year. Uh, Jeremiah Bay. And what we have today, I would call, is the residual economy. Let me explain. During the pandemic, we had the pandemic economy propped up by six trillion dollars of government money. And that six trillion of government money created this situation of people feeling like one of the things that happened during the pandemic, the car market exploded, like getting cars, buying cars, the price of cars went through the roof. Um, because of supply chain issues with making of new cars. The price of new cars went through the roof because you couldn't get new cars. They weren't making new cars as fast or they were making new cars that were short on parts. So you had that issue. And you, you had a lot of issues that created what I call the residual economy. The pandemic economy was flush with enhanced unemployment, government loans, direct stimulus payments and now we have the residual economy the aka the real economy we're dealing with the real economy and you know we're you know in my opinion the reason that we had this rapid inflation was due to the pandemic economy which set the stage for us to actually be dealing with the residual economy and the residual economy is kind of funny. Like, you know, there's all of these YouTube channels talking about housing crash, housing crash, housing crash. And the housing market hasn't crashed. Uh, right now, people are still buying houses and it looks like interest rates are starting to come down, which was just going to put more people into the home buying frenzy. So what happened with the pandemic economy and I'm about to use one of my favorite expressions. Luxuries once tasted become necessities. So people got used to working remote, working from home, creating their own schedules. This is another thing from the pandemic economy. And now today people will quit their job if you talk about they gotta work um, more, they gotta work from an office or something. Um, it's very, very different what's going on right now. So you, you have a lot of things that are happening 
you have a lot of things that are happening today that are a result of the pandemic economy. And one of the things that is happening is you're having people kind of spaz out. And what do I mean by that? The pandemic economy, you didn't have to worry about your car being repossessed. You didn't have to worry about being evicted. You didn't have to worry about being foreclosed on. Everyone was working with you with your credit situation. Now we're back to the real economy. Evictions are skyrocketing. Evictions are skyrocketing. Now, what I think is next, and we will see this in 2024, is the number of foreclosures. Now, I don't think we're gonna have foreclosures. We had like 10 million foreclosures, 2009 to 12, 10 million. I don't think we're gonna get to 10 million foreclosures, but we might get to 4 million. We may get to four, maybe even 5 million, because as we shift, as we shift from the pandemic economy and start moving to the real economy, uh, things get to be very, very different. And people are dealing with real money, real issues, real situations. This is what people are dealing with. This is where people are. And one of the things that you will see is during this real economy is pure, unadulterated terror. The real economy doesn't care if you are a single mother with three kids living in a two bedroom apartment. If you do not pay your rent in the real economy, you are getting thrown out. You're getting pushed out. And one of the things that I really see is a lot of people are on that hustle mode. They're on that super, super hustle mode. They're really, really working hard to actually do things that they need to do to stay efficient, to stay afloat, to stay solvent. But we're now in the real economy, you know, from the pandemic economy. Now we've shifted to the real economy and that's why I call it the new economy, the new economy, the real economy, because Right now, people are dealing with real issues. Homelessness is starting to spiral. Spir you know, I may actually do individual videos on homelessness, um, evictions, uh, foreclosures, because right now you will see stuff online that is out of kilter with reality. And one of the things that is happening, like I watch videos about car prices and things with uh, cars and how cars are not selling and how trucks are not selling. And when I go out, I look to see how many new car tags I see. And guess what? I was out the other day, I'm starting to see more and more new car tags. And like I said, I really feel that we're gonna have a recession in 2024, which I understand is an election year. And it may or may not happen we may actually have what I call a earthy recession where it feels like a recession, but the government numbers will say we're not in a recession, even though it feels like we're in a recession. Many people feel that we're in a recession right now. Many people feel that we're in a depression right now. And it also depends upon the things that you need to look at, the things you need to do, the things you need to understand to build yourself out of the old economy. If you're still wanting to work remote, you're still wanting to do these things, and this is very much the old economy, you, you're gonna be struggling to deal with the new economy because right now there's a bunch of CEOs that talked about, you know, we need you to come back to the office. And this has caused a huge, huge revolt, huge, huge revolt. But the pandemic economy, just to really define it, the pandemic economy is an economy where people are 
hurting and they're hurting financially and they're hurting from many different levels because people do not understand that the economy doesn't care about you, it doesn't care about your family, it, does, it, it doesn't care. It simply doesn't care. And one of the things that you have to understand and look at is the, resilient, the result of the economy came from a lot of the government intervention that happened during the pandemic. Like, there's an estimated that there was almost a trillion dollars worth of fraud when the government was giving out all this money, a trillion dollars worth of fraud. So there was a lot of things. So we're making this adjustment back to the real economy, back to real numbers, dealing with these things. And I don't think a lot of people are ready because a lot of people are still, you know, because this is why in during the last recession, the Great Recession, which was the second largest economic event that we had besides the Great Depression, we didn't see all these videos made by people doing TikTok and all this other stuff because it didn't, um, it just didn't happen like that. People had a more resilience and resolve and they were hardier. And the pandemic just made people very, very easygoing and not that challenging when it comes to actually handling what's going on with the real economy. And th this, this is one of the things that's happening right now. We're, we're in the real economy. We're dealing with real numbers. And there's a lot of people who are equipped to deal with the real economy because they built up some financial reserves. They have a robust business. They're making money. They're doing the things that they need to do to survive. So this is where we are. The resulting inflation, I feel, came from the government intervention. And I said this before, and I'll say it again. We should have let happen what was going to happen because the economy would not be in the shape that it is in today. And a lot of people are going to argue and scream. We had to do something. We had to save people. And that may be how you feel, but this is one of the reasons that we're in this dramatically real economy where the average person cannot afford to buy a house, where the average person will struggle to buy the average car. This is the inflationary price that we paid because there was so much money stuffed into the economy. So that's my take. Let me know what your thoughts and opinions are. And once again, we're doing training, hands-on training to help people make that stimulus money. Send the first comment below. And if you don't want the training, if you need a consult, there's a link below to set you up where you can go ahead and book a consult call. All right, that's all I got for you guys. I will talk to you in the next one.